So you want to build your own ship in Starfield. You've seen all those glorious vessels traversing the stars, and all of those fancy ones that people have been showing off on TikTok, but you just can't wrap your head around all of the parts, systems, and fundamentals that stand as a barrier between you and your dream spacecraft. Well, it's time to take a break from all of that honest work you've been doing. As I'm here to walk you through shipbuilding in Starfield, breaking down the systems, the parts, the process, and what is truly possible when you put your mind to it. The first step in your shipbuilding journey is to speak with this here lovely gentleman. Well, actually, it can be any of the ship technicians dotted around the spaceports, but you'll have a pretty similar experience whichever one you go to. You can ask him about seeing what ships he has for sale, and early on this will be a couple of different ships, but nothing too dramatic. Later on, you may see some very big expensive blocks with engines attached, and yeah, don't worry about those just yet. You can also ask him to view and modify your own ships, which is where you'll want to go. From here, you can see the ones you own, and you'll have a couple of options. You can upgrade them, which will automatically show you the parts you have, and allow you to select better parts to replace them with, if you just want to keep it simple and make a quick improvement. Or you can head into the ship building menu, which will allow you to fully modify your ships by selecting parts, components, and attaching things left, right, and center until you have something that looks vaguely like it could get off the ground and not make too many collisions on its way up to orbit. Now, while you don't have the outright option to build a new ship from scratch, what you can do is just take an existing ship or buy a new one and use that, and then select everything at once and just delete. Now you have a blank slate to go ahead and start building. But this, this is a daunting moment. Where do you even begin? Truth be told, you don't really need to worry about where you begin. You can put down whatever you want to first and go from there. Maybe a hab, maybe the bay, or maybe you want to build outwards from the cockpit. It all works and you'll reach the same result any way you decide. The most important thing to note is the parts required to make it a functioning spaceship. This means a reactor, a grav drive, engines, sufficient landing gear for the mass of the ship, a cockpit, a docking station, fuel tanks, a shield generator, cargo space, and at least one hab that is connected to both the cockpit and also to the loading bay. You'll also need to attach any weapons you want onto the weapon mounts and can have up to three different types. These will also need to be assigned to the ship's power systems before you can call it a day. Note that if you're limited on space for the weapons, there are mounts in the structural section of the ship parts that allow you to attach two to one spot. The rest of the ship is your freedom, and where you place all of these things is entirely up to you, as long as they fall within the parameters of functionality, which the error log can inform you of if there does happen to be any issues. The parts you can select for your ship will be based on different in-game ship construction companies such as Tayo, Nova, and Deimos. The parts you can select will depend on where you are in the settled systems, and certain ones will only be available in UC space, free star systems, or on certain star yards for example. More parts for your ships will become available as you unlock perks in the shipbuilding skill, meaning you'll have access to a variety of things including more powerful components. However, the class of parts is broken up into class A, class B, and class C, with C being the highest class. At first, everything you'll have will be class A, but as you progress through the game and level up, you'll come across class B and class C parts, both in the shipbuilding selections and equipped on other ships you'll encounter, friendly or otherwise. If you decide to install some higher class parts on your ship, they will need to meet the same class of the ship's reactor. For example, a class B weapon cannot be installed on a ship with a class A reactor, but it can be installed on a ship with a class B or class C reactor. If you attempt this, the error log will prevent you from finalizing the build and you'll need to adjust the parts to make sure the ship can function. Similarly, if you had a ship that was class B or C or attempted to board one, you won't be able to actually fly it at first as using higher ship classes will require more perks in the piloting skill. 
Once you unlock these skills, you're free to install and fly ships with any class equipment on them, but they will still need to meet all of the requirements of power distribution and general construction rules. So, with all of that technical stuff out of the way, and now you know exactly what needs to go into your ship, you can start to focus on what you want in your ship. The first thing to consider is the interior. The way in which you line up the habs will determine how you navigate the interior of the ship, including where the entrance is, where the cockpit is, and where the docking station is, and also just where each room you want to be is placed. The number of habs you use and the way you align them will also determine how big your ship is going to be. There are some larger habs, but even just using a bunch of small ones means that you're going to have to consider the ship will be on the larger side in the end. This will also affect the overall mass of the ship, meaning you'll have to compensate that with enough landing gear and engines, as otherwise it may be unsuitable for construction or be too heavy to reach optimal speeds and maneuvers. However, as we know, more engines means you'll need more power, which means a better reactor and grav drive and so on. If you want a smaller ship, then one or two habs is going to be best, but if you want a whole station to fly around, then you'll want to spend some time thinking about the layout. The make of the habs will also determine the style of the interior, as Deimos habs will have a different room style to Nova habs for example. The only way to actually check this is to finalize the build and go aboard the ship, but even if you decided that you wanted to change the habs later, you can just delete them and slot a different one in instead. So, with habs in mind, the actual style and layout of the ship should be something that you're thinking about next. However, even if you don't, you can just kind of see what you end up with and go from there. But if you want a traditional starship, a large block of a station, or something asymmetrical or a little obscure, then going into it with that mindset means you can get a little more creative as the process unfolds. Any way you want to start building will work perfectly. Place down habs, start with the cockpit, or even purchase a ship and use it as your base inspiration, making it your own. Either way, you'll want to play around for a while and take a good look through all of the structural parts, the landing gear, and the engines. These are the main aspects that are going to determine how your ship looks. As we mentioned, you'll start to see more as you progress through the game and unlock more perks, and the types will depend on where the ship technician you're speaking to is located. If you want to use parts from different places, you'll have to finalize the build with some placeholders, fly it over to the next place, and then replace them with what you wanted from there. After spending some time perusing each selection from each location, the more familiar you'll become with everything. The more familiar you are with all of the parts available to you, the better things are going to start coming together. So it's definitely worth putting the time in to do that. Your first ship build won't be as refined as your fifth, but that doesn't mean you can't make something great right away either. Now, with all of that precious time you've spent looking way too hard at ship parts, you can start to bring something together. As you're building your ship, there are just a few extra things to keep in mind. Firstly, look at what each part does. Habs, structure and other components will all attribute to the stats of the ship, whether that be how many crew you can have, how many passengers you can take on, or what the strength of the hull is. There's also the cargo, which you can add plenty of, but it will bulk out the size of your ship, especially early on. Then there's fuel and shields, which will affect both your travel and how safe you are while you travel from less than reputable encounters. Also keep in mind that the number of crew members you can actually have on board your ship is still limited behind the perks, and you'll need to unlock more points to increase this limit. At first you'll be able to have a maximum of 3 regardless, though the starting ship will limit this to 2 until upgraded anyway. With all of that, you can get building and have fun preparing the ship of your dreams. You can also tweak the colours of each part of your ship to your liking, going for a universal colour scheme or something completely wild. Selecting parts to either move them or colour them is super easy too. You can press RB or the mapped key on your keyboard to select individual pieces, grouping them together so you can move them or paint them. Or you can press LB to select everything at once and colour it all together. Just keep an eye on the error log as you go and when you're finishing the build in order to check up on anything you might be missing or have overlooked. 
and also the cost. This can get quite expensive very quickly, and you may need to compromise on some quality parts for the time being. Still, it's a joy to build these ships, and once you have everything you need, it can be a great pastime to mess around with, even if you're not planning on keeping the ship. But in the end, you might just come up with something that you really like. And now you can set that new beauty as your home ship and head over to the landing pad to marvel at its... Oh, that doesn't actually look quite as good as I was hoping. Well, time to get back to the drawing board.